What else do you like? What kind of music do you like? Well, my music is... My music is... I like Marshmello. Um, he was a... He's a... I like him because he's a great DJ and... What is he, what is he off of? Uh, he was off of... Uh, he's off, he was off of uh, some... Some songs, uh, happier, alone. Um, but what's Marshmallow? What's the guy? Does is he from Fortnite? Um, he he's he's sort of in Fortnite and also a DJ. Okay. He's pop. He's uh, popular. He's 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 the he's the. Well, he was born in uh, Pennsylvania, and and I love it. <laughs> I'm Cassiopeia Smith, and this is my son Raiden Smith. Um, <laughs> he's the reason why I got started with the Autism Society of Oregon. Um, found out when he was two and a half years old that he had autism. I, he, at two years old, he should have had about 50 words or more, and he didn't. He had a lot of jargon, and um, it was when my mom had mentioned to me about autism. I had never heard about it before. Um, I didn't realize my mom had also dealt with, or I shouldn't say dealt with, she had worked with people of special needs and autism was one of them. And um, I had looked into the signs and my son had already had half of them. Um, and it was then that I was a full-time student at EOU and I was also working part-time for a doctor. And um, I had him evaluated by early intervention and that was the starting point because our, our meeting lasted two and a half hours. Um, so at that point, I had already known a lot of my son's triggers, what would set him off, what wouldn't set him off. Um, I wouldn't be able to take him to the grocery store with me. <laughs> um, grocery store trips were a challenge um, because he would want something and we couldn't get it for him. And he didn't understand why. And so we, um, I had, I had gotten his evaluation or diagnosis, I should say, because I had requested it through early intervention. And they told me I didn't have to go that route, but I wanted to know because I wanted to be a better mom in taking care of my son as far as his needs. And um, so I went and had them, they had brought in a, an, um, an autism specialist come into my house and she pretty much played with him for, you know, did like 15 screenings just playing with him and um, got an official diagnosis that way. And from there, I quit my job. I quit school just to be a full time mom and did all that I needed to do for him. Um, got started with CHD with the disability services they have there. Um, I got him going on SSI and just became stay at home mom. and spending as much time as I could with him and um, doing what I needed to do there. Um, well, a well, little while later, um, about three years old, I think is when they start doing the schooling for early intervention. He was going two days a, two days a week and he, he did that for three years. Um, he went through a lot. He went through, they, they worked with him as far as um, pica, which is an eating non-food items. He had that for up until he was about four years old when he started noticing the difference between food and non-food. Um, not a lot of people under know what that word is. Um, but if you, if he'd show you a fuzz and he'd show you the fuzz and if you didn't get to him fast enough, he was going to put it in his mouth. Um, just those things. And uh, he... Um, he didn't know, understand the separation from um, having a toy and not being able, like going to the doctor's office and he really liked a toy that was there. Um, he couldn't understand why he couldn't keep it with all the time. And so doctor visits were a challenge. Also, he, uh, he really liked the little maze thing that they had and we would have to let the people in the office know that we'll bring it right back. We just gotta go out to the car. Um, we'd get him buckled up and we'd have to take it from him and it was heartbreaking because he was screaming bloody murder. Um, no one would understand that at all. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of trial um, on that part. He has obviously, he's gotten so much better. His, uh, 
trials and his determination to want to communicate and to tell us what uh, he wanted uh, from us as parents. Um, it just got easier the older he, he got. Um, and then what got me going with the Autism Society of Oregon is I had heard about a take a break program. And I heard that it was um, something that they would pay up to $25 for food, wherever you wanted to go, they'd get a gift certificate and they'd pay up to $25. They'd buy also tw up to $20 worth for a movie you and your date, and then um, they would pay up to four hours of respite care. And you get to, to pick whoever you want that you trust with your child, and they would pay up to four hours of respite care. Um, I jumped on that because me and my husband hadn't had a date night in a while. Um, so that was fun. And then um, the gal really liked my energy and asked me if I would consider being a chapter rep for Union County. And because she'd been one for a long time. and. Um, she kind of wanted somebody that um, knew that was still in the younger ropes of things with with uh, their child on the spectrum, and because um, her daughter was already in her late twenties, and um, she just needed somebody that was going to be in the earlier stages still. So I jumped on it, and I I said, "Why not?" Wow. Um, and then uh, we kind of brainstormed about what to do. As far as um, she mentioned something about a skateathon, but I wanted to do something bigger, and uh, I reached out to the community on the you know Facebook pages like the Union County Class Classifieds, and the um, amount of support I got for doing a walk was incredible. Um, There's a lot of people that was that were very supportive of it, and now we are going into our fourth year of the autism walk. And um, we keep the uh, artwork on the shirts with people who, uh, who, have, who are on the spectrum or they are a family member of someone that's on the spectrum. And um, Raiden was our first year artist. He put his art on there and it took him, it took him over about a year and a half for him to start wanting to color and draw on his own because he, he always wanted me and his dad to do it for him, but we knew he could do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a challenge. And it wasn't until after his, uh, his kindergarten year was when he started doing that. Um, but the autism walk has really taken off. Um, the support we have from the community and um, everybody's been very supportive, very supportive. And it's, uh, it's just something that I, I never thought would um, would grow into where it's at now. Um, you know, you always think about what you want to be when you grow up and what your purpose is going to be, and you never know. And uh, let's, well, autism is my specialty, and it's obviously my purpose and what I needed to do. And as far as advocating for the county um, and advocating for anybody um, who needs that extra support. Um, we also have a, a special needs group that we meet the last Thursday of every month, and that's open to everybody on special needs. It's not just on the autism spectrum, but everybody. Um, because we all need to know that we have somebody out there that's not going to have any judgment, that's not going to um, judge on anything that they go through. We're all trying as parents. Um, it does not come with a manual. <laughs> Um, so, and we all have our own way right. and, um, even though the next parent's not doing that, we have to do that to best suit our household. So it's nice. Um, we do have a lot of different families that, you know, come and go. It's a constant rotation, but that's okay. As long as we're there, um, that's what's important for us. That's what gives us a good peace of mind that we are there for anybody that needs it. So it's, it's been great. Um, this journey has been um, more than I could have ever imagined. The walk is, it usually takes place around the third Saturday in June, um, just to kind of get past the stock show and school getting out and everything. So kind of letting the dust settle a little bit. Um, 
so we do have a lot of local sponsors um, that you know that are you know that provide their funds and everything. All the funds stay local. They cover Union County, Baker County, and Umatilla County. So any families who um, say need a gas card to go to a therapy that's out of town or something like that, ASO can provide that service. Um, also, the Take a Break program that we that I talked about earlier, we also provide that to the families that need it. Um, it's great. It's a, just a really great program. And um, so there is me, and then there's another chapter up I have. Her name's Julie K. Dudley. Um, Julie K. Uh, has great experience. She's actually, if I've ever had any questions or something I'm not really sure of, she's definitely the person I go to to ask um, about certain things. Um, and so, yeah, all the funding stays in, in, in Union County, Union Bacon and Baker and Umatilla. And then um, we have a lot of vendors. Like there, we've had vendors that have made weighted blankets, which having that pressure, uh, pressure, which sensory processing disorder goes along with autism a lot, sight, sound, touch, sound, smells um, play a huge part of that. Um, some kids or adults really seek that pressure. A lot of them, it's just too much. Um, I know my son loves getting squeezed by his dad. He loves that part. He likes, he likes the rough stuff. Um, and then um, we've also had vendors like Kettle Corn and More, and um, we've also had U.S. Cellular, and uh, let's see, we've also, I've also had um, a couple people that have made jewelry, and a portion of their proceeds come to ASO. Um, and then I've been just pretty much there on, on site, making sure everyone's having fun and just having a good old time. Lunch is provided for the walk, or for the, those that participate in the walk or volunteer. Um, and a lot of the uh, food or drinks that are provided are all local um, distributors. Um, I know that my, my boss at uh, Matt Scarfo, he's really helped out a lot um, as far as he provided the food the last couple years. And um, it's been a great support. He's been a really great support for the community also. Um, I got Frito-Lay to to donate their, you know, their chips and everything like that. So it was nice to actually go to the distributors and get their support on stuff like that. And they were more than happy to do that. And where does the walk, where does it take place? At? The walk takes place at Riverside Park. Um, we decided to move it to June because the first year we did it was in April. It was still chilly. And then it wasn't until that next year was when we had that really big snowstorm. So we figured it would just be safer for our county to just do it in, in June. Um, and Riverside Park's been a great venue uh, for us because we um, utilize the whole pavilion um, and we also use the, the greenway too. So it's safe and secure for anyone who, um, if they're on crutches, they want to participate in the walk. I've, um, we've also had members who are in wheelchairs. It's just safe and secure for them. And all it is is just walking from the pavilion across the parking lot over the bridge and turning, going to the end of the walk and then coming back. And it's just, it's that simple, it's that easy. Um, and it's just keeping everybody safe. It's also a color walk too. So those who want color on them, they get little colors on them and everything. Um, I just, it's just, I, I love it. I, I don't know.